I am back from Korea, which is evidenced by my pama, which is Korean for perm. Is this what I wanted the perm to look like? No, but it's what I got, so we're just gonna have to deal with it, you and I. But enough about perms. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about everything that sold for me in one week, so if you wanna hear what sold for me, how much it sold for, how much profit I made, how I made these sales, definitely stay tuned. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I am a part-time reseller on a variety of reselling platforms, which means that I have a full-time job, although right now I'm not working that job since I am a teacher and teachers wonderfully get summers off. That being said, I always think I'm gonna get so much done in the summer and I do not. And that's because with it being the summer, my kids are home and we are always out traveling to really fun places and making new memories. And even when we're not on the road, we're just like hanging out, we're trying to do fun things and therefore I feel like all of the time that I think is going to go into reselling never does and it's okay I'm not mad about it but in today's video we are going to be talking about sales that I made June 5th through the 11th now this week I tried a few things because as I've been sharing on my channel in my what sold videos May and even April were pretty rough I just was not having amazing sales and so one thing that I did knowing that in the following week I would be going to Korea and unable to make sales on platforms like Poshmark because I was just gonna go on vacation mode. I went ahead and ran like a 40 or a 50% off sale on Poshmark. I don't think I ran like an official sale in terms of like dropping prices, but I let people know on Instagram that that's what I was doing. Some of you came and shopped for me, so thank you very much. And I also ran a sale on eBay. And I think those things helped me move a lot of pieces, not necessarily for a lot, which has kind of been the theme of the last few weeks in my what sold videos. I've been selling a good amount of things, just not selling those things for very much money um, and that definitely continued. But if any of that sounds interesting to you, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. I do have a monster video coming up from a bunch of different people who sell on Poshmark with just some great tips on finding success on Poshmark. And if you're interested in seeing that video, definitely make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that YouTube lets you know as soon as that video hits. And that way too, you'll get alerts every time I upload other reselling content just like this. But let's go ahead and jump right into Monday, which is June 5th. On Poshmark, I sold this pair of Levi's 511 slim fit dark wash jeans in a men's size 30 by 32. Those sold for $14. And that's because the day before I was running a 30% off sale, which means I sent out offers on everything that anyone had ever liked for 30% off. Um, the person missed it. I think that they sent me an offer. I think they said, hey, I missed the initial offer you sent me, so I'm just sending it right back of $14, which again, I just went ahead and accepted. My cost of goods on those jeans was $3.50 from a local consignment store. I made a net profit of $7.55. We were starting the week off strong, people. The next thing to sell was this Nike dry fit black swoosh long sleeve shirt in a men's size extra large. This I sold for $12. That was with discounted shipping and I had $3.92 into it from a reseller who just had too much inventory on her hands, so I bought like a half pallet off of her. Every sellable item came out to about $3.92. I made a net profit of $3.11. And unfortunately, that's not even the lowest profit that I made on an item this week, you're going to hear about something pretty ridiculous here in a second. So make sure that you don't click out of this video if you want to see how little profit you can actually make on an item. The next sale was over on Mercari and it was by the brand TUK. It's like T.U.K. I don't know what that stands for. I assume it stands for something, but it was this pair of ballet creeper multi-strap mustard patent leather shoes in a size eight. These sold for $42 on Mercari. I had $15 into them from a local consignment store. I had never heard of the brand before, but I saw them at the consignment store and I just thought they were super unique. They were running maybe like a 50 or a 75% off sale at the time at that consignment store. And I just thought I'd take a chance on them. I ran comps while I was at the consignment store, figured I could you know, list them around $50 and hopefully get anything north of 40. And that's exactly what happened. They sold for 42 and I made a net profit of $20.81. If I can make a profit of $20 or more on an item, I am a happy camper. That is where I want to be as far as the profit that I'm making per item. It didn't happen this week 
on a lot of items, but it sure did on those, and that felt really good. And then on my website, which is shopbeckypark.com, I had a viewer make a purchase for me, and I forgot to write the name down, so I will put it right here. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to visit my site, check it out, and even make a purchase for me. It means the world to me. But she got this dress by the brand Tula Rosa that is a brand sold on Revolve, and it was the Berkeley Yellow Crochet Lace Long Sleeve Dress in a size medium. I got this at a different consignment store, again, a local consignment store to me. They were having some kind of sale. I got this for $12. It sold for $49.99 on my website, and so I made a net profit of $29.61. So thank you again for your support. It really, truly means the world to me. And that was a cool way to start the week. I had two pretty good sales and two like sales and, you know, sales across three different platforms, which I love. And the reason for that is because of a program that I use called List Perfectly, which enables me to cross list quickly from List Perfectly, where all of my listings live, to all of the different platforms that I want to sell on. They give you the ability to cross list to like over 10 platforms, if I'm not mistaken. Any platform that I want to sell on, they offer it. And so it's a great software that I use to cross list, but also what I use for my inventory management, for sales reports across all of my different platforms. It is probably the most important reselling tool that I use on a daily basis. And if it's something that you want to try out as well, I do have a link down below in the description and my coupon code Becky Park enables you to save 30% on your first month. So definitely try it if you've been looking for a faster way to cross list or if you want to just try out more platforms than the one or two that you're on, List Perfectly makes it really easy, just like it did for me this Monday. On Tuesday, which was June 6th, okay, this was my super sad sale in that my profit was pathetic. Let me share. So on Poshmark, I sold this Gap blue quarter zip pullover sweater in a men's size small that sold for $5 with discounted shipping. And so I made a net profit of three cents. Sadly, that's not the lowest amount of profit that I've ever made. I have actually lost money on sales before. Um, it's still pretty pathetic, like three cents is, mm, that's, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty sad. The next sale was over on eBay. It was this Calvin Klein Royal Blue Flutter Sleeve Sheath Dress in a size six. This sold for $21. It was promoted at 3%. I get some questions sometimes in the comments about, you know, promoting listings. I just promote everything on eBay at 3%. Why 3%? I don't know. My friend Steve from Resale Dojo, I will link his channel down in the description below, but he's really smart, he's very successful on eBay, and he made a video once about how he went from uh, promoting, I think at like 1% to 3%, and I was like, ah, he's, he's a smart guy, I'll try the same thing. And ever since then, I've just kind of stuck with it. I don't know that there's actually a huge change, but I just did it. And I do keep track of which items sell because of promoted listings. And this week there were a lot. So I think it definitely helps. I'm not going to ever probably put myself in a position where I'm promoting things at like 10% or 20%. I think that's kind of crazy to turn over that much of your profits to eBay just to promote your listing more. Um, but 3%, I'm comfortable with that. That puts me you know, in the territory of how much Poshmark is taking from you. Um, a little bit less still, I would say. So 3% it is, that's where I feel comfortable. But this I got for free from America's Thrift Supply, which, you know, they sell like liquidation lots, they sell micro bales, I think just actual bales and pallets as well. Personally, I do not recommend purchasing, you know, micro bales or pallets from them because they sent me stuff for free to do an unboxing on my channel and it was not impressive. And they knew that I was gonna be doing an unboxing. So sometimes people will ask, you know, when companies do this, do they try to send the best stuff to people who are gonna unbox their products on YouTube? If that's what they were trying to do, that really means they're not really sending out quality sellable items. I had to donate a lot of the items that came to me in that micro bale of dresses that they sent me. Um, I probably tried to consign another good chunk of them, and I was really only able to list probably 10% of what I got. About 10% is what was worth my time when it came to reselling. So this was one of those pieces. I did end up making a net profit of $18.47, but that's because I had no money into this dress because they sent it to me for free. So I don't necessarily recommend trying out America's Thrift Supply. You do what you want though, it's your business. But I do find good success with Calvin Klein, which is why I went ahead and listed that dress. 
The next thing to sell was kind of a surprising sale. It was this Adidas maroon vented pullover windbreaker jacket in a men's size medium. Now I've had this forever. I've had it for probably at least a year or two years. Um, and it sold for my full asking price of $27.99. I don't think that these jackets typically sell for that much. I probably did have it overpriced a little bit, but finally the perfect buyer came along and bought it at my full asking price. I had $5.49 into that from a men's thread of rescue box. That was my average cost of goods for everything in that box. Um, and again, that was from like two years ago, I wanna say, and my net profit was $19.12. Moving on to Wednesday, which was June 7th, on Poshmark, I sold this jacket by the brand Obey Propaganda. I've sold one or two things by this brand before. I think it is actually a pretty sought after brand. I don't see it very often or find it very often, but it was something that a friend of mine gave to me before he moved um, about two hours away. Um, I gave him some money for everything that he gave me, so I had about $2 into this, but it was this gray full zip utility jacket in a size medium with a hidden hood. It sold for $29 after being listed for over half a year so it was not a quick flip but you know I got a decent amount for it and I made a net profit of $21.20. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was this pair of Abercrombie & Fitch Mom Jean Paper Bag Denim High Rise Shorts in a size 28. Those sold for $18. I had $3.60 into them from Play-Dohs, and so I made a net profit of $12. I think Play-Dohs was doing like their 70% off sale, and I think I just had this sense of urgency to buy shorts to put on my Poshmark closet and eBay store. Um, this was probably sometime in like March or something like that. I just felt like I really needed shorts. It's something that I don't find a lot of in my area for some reason, not good ones. And these weren't spectacular, but I got them and I made $12 off them. So there you go. On eBay, I sold this New With Tags Anthropology Maeve red mini shift dress in a size six. It had this beautiful like bow on the back and I think it was kind of open aside from the bow. Um, this was something that I got from the reseller who had too much inventory and so, you know, I bought like a half pallet off of her. So I had $3.92 into this and it sold for $41.90. That was the offer that I sent out to watchers. Someone, you know, accepted my offer and so my net profit on that was $31.33. I know that the allure of anthropology has gone down quite a bit, but it still sells. I think this being new with tags definitely helped, but this also did not sell quickly. It was definitely listed for over a year, and so that just goes to show that while anthropology can sell, it's not going to move as quickly as it used to. The next thing to sell was this Torrid denim crop pair of overalls. Um, they were in what was called a vintage stretch and they were in a dark wash um, in a size 28. I have found that plus size overalls, honestly like overalls in general, but also for whatever reason, especially plus size overalls do really well and this was no exception. These sold for $31.99 on eBay, which was my full asking price. And believe it or not, I got these at a local consignment store during their birthday sale for a dollar and 11 cents for the birthday sale what they did was they had all of these racks outside you just go outside and shove as much as you can into regular little shopping bags and each shopping bag was thirty dollars well it was thirty dollars for the first day and then each day after that the price of the bag dropped considerably so i think when i went on this particular day because i went back i went back after the first day of the sale i think bags were like ten dollars maybe or five dollars even they got to be really really cheap and it was amazing because you know i was rifling through and just grabbing everything that i had seen the first time that i was like eh, i don't think it's worth it right now like this torrid pair of overalls i was like i don't want to get it on the first day because it's going to take up so much room in a shopping bag so i was almost like looking for them when I went back, knowing that, okay, now it's worth it to get those overalls. Um, so there was a lot of that kind of stuff where I was seeing things that I had seen before that I was like, okay, now that it's $10 a bag, it's worth it to stuff this into these shopping bags. But the crazy thing is that they were still putting out stuff. So they have bins and bins and bins of stuff that they've been saving that they, you know, put out for the sale, but they can't put it all out in the first day or even the first couple days because like I said I went back like three or four days later so that was kind of cool because when I went back they were putting out stuff that you know hadn't even been on the racks yet and they were really good items and so because I went back a different day I was able to get some really good stuff people assume you know with these kinds of sales that by the second or third day things are going to be really picked over but you don't know how much back stock some stores may have and they may be putting out brand new merchandise that no one else has seen but because you're going back 
back and because they have room to now fill in the empty spots on the racks, um, you might actually be able to find some really great stuff for much cheaper. So that's a little pro tip if you have any uh, consignment stores or even thrift stores in your area that do these kinds of sales. So yeah, that sold for $31.99. It was promoted at 3%. So that's another item that sold because of promoted listings on eBay. I made a net profit on those overalls of $24.09. The next thing to sell was this Eileen Fisher turquoise 100% linen short sleeve tunic shirt in a size medium. This sold for $35. I did have $13 into it from a local consignment store. I actually hauled this not too long ago. I think it was probably listed for like a handful of months and I made a net profit of $17.50. And then on Thursday, which was June 8th, on eBay, I sold this Gander Mountain Guide Series green button down vintage shirt in a men's size large. That sold for $15.99, which I think was, let's see, was that my full asking price? I think I was actually running a sale on eBay during this time. It was either 30 or 40% off. So I think that that $15.99 price was my sale price. And I made a net profit on that shirt of $11.07. That was something that I purchased from a reseller who realized about a year into reselling that she hated reselling clothes. So she sold me all of her clothing inventory and it was like, I want to say it was like 10 boxes filled to the brim with clothes, like 10 huge boxes. So I think I've listed the majority of the stuff from her at this point. There's still maybe like one or two boxes worth that I haven't listed, which is crazy. It feels good to finally get to the end of that buyout. The next thing to sell was this pair of So Slimming by Chico's tan glittery pants in a Chico's one and a half or a US size 10. These sold for $17.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. This was also promoted at 3%. And again, I only had $1.11 into it because it was an item that I bought at that local consignment store during their birthday sale, like the second time that I went. And so I made a net profit of $12.46 on those. And they were probably listed for like a week or two. Those sold really fast as did the Torrid overalls. I think those sold in just a handful of days. All right, so Friday, which was June 9th, I had a really great day. I think this was a day that I was accepting really good offers and I was, you know, letting people know whether it was on Instagram or wherever that I was basically doing like 30 or 40% off of bundles. Um, so I did pretty well for myself. I also had some sales like the normal way where people just send me offers or buy things outright. So the first sale of the day was over on Poshmark and it was this Nike dry fit blue t-shirt and it said rise as one on the front and it was in a size large. That sold for $18, which I believe was my full asking price. The text actually rises one the typography it did have some cracking on the lettering and that's why i priced it as low as i did but it still you know sold for my full asking price very quickly again maybe within a week or two i had two dollars into it from the reseller who doesn't like to resell clothes and so i made a net profit of twelve dollars and forty cents on that the next thing to sell was this Cabela's black short sleeve work button up shirt in a size 2XL. It did have pockets on the front, like right at the chest. This sold for $21. I think I had it listed for 30, I wanna say. I had $2 into it from the reseller who doesn't like to resell clothes. I made a net profit of $14.80. And that one was listed a little bit longer, probably like a few months. The next thing to sell was from the same person. So I had $2 into it. It was this pair of 7-7. Seven, seven. I believe this is a brand sold at Kohl's. Um, it was a pair of skinny pants with like a houndstooth plaid print. Um, they were ponty knit and they were in a size extra large. These sold for $18. I had $2 into them, so I made a net profit of $12.40, and those sold within a month. Pretty quickly for a pair of pants by this brand, I feel like. Hello from my balcony where I am editing this video right now. I realized I missed like four items when I was filming the last time. I like didn't talk about four of the items, so I'm going to talk about them here right now. The first item that sold was this pair of Abercrombie and Fitch Simone high rise, super skinny distressed jeans in a size 30. I got these at that birthday sale at the consignment store the first day. So I had like $2 and what was it like 57 cents into them, something like that. And they sold for $20. I'm trying to open up my tabs here on my laptop. They sold for $20 on Poshmark. That gave me a profit of $16. But then once you subtract the amount that I paid in my cost of goods, my actual profit on those is $13.48. 
$2.52, that's how much I had into those. So, you know, I don't have a lot of experience selling Abercrombie and Fitch jeans. I know some of their jeans can do extremely well. These jeans did not fall under that category. So the next thing that sold was actually a bundle of three items. And this bundle was great in that it sold to a friend of mine named Jennifer, but it was also horrible because I realized as I was trying to ship this out that I didn't have all three items. I don't know, I might have one of them, I just don't know where it is. But the first item to sell in this bundle was this NFL team apparel Detroit line Stafford jersey top um, in a youth size extra large. That one I had listed for $15. However, you're gonna see that I accepted a pretty low offer on this bundle and that's because I had let people know on Instagram and YouTube. I think I said I was gonna do 50% off offer. So that's exactly what she did. Um, so that was the first item. The second item was this Patagonia cobalt blue nylon half sit pullover top. Um, this was in a women's size medium. That one I believe I had $3 and what was it like 72 cents into that was something that I got from um, someone who just had too much inventory on her hands and I bought a half pallet off of her. And then the last item was the one that I could not find anywhere. I had my husband look through the bins after I looked through all of them. I was certain that it had to be there somewhere because I'm like fairly positive this has not sold anywhere. I just don't know where it is. So I reached out to Jennifer. I let her know what happened. She was so sweet. And I just sent her cash in the amount that um, you know, she paid for this hoodie given the 50% off bundle price, but uh, I'm just so irritated. I did tell her that if I find it in the near future, I will go ahead and send it to her. Um, but that was super frustrating. So hopefully I find it one of these days. I still need to do like a full inventory of all of my pieces and hopefully it'll come up during that time. So this bundle sold for $38, but if you just consider, you know, Poshmark's fees, um, my profit on that was $30 and 40 cents, but less because you have to consider cost of goods. So my next sale was the first bundle out of three that I had this day. Mm -hmm. The first item in this bundle, and let's see, this bundle had two items. The first item was this pair of American Eagle button fly cut off khaki cargo shorts in a size 28. They were made of 100% cotton and those I got forever ago from the Goodwill outlet in Indianapolis and I know that it's forever ago because I don't think I ever was able to get to the Indianapolis Goodwill outlet um, last year so this had to have been from the year before or even sometime earlier than that um, which means that I've had these for a while. But I had $1.66 into those. And then the next thing to sell in this bundle was this pair of Levi's 514 straight leg dark wash jeans in a size 30 by 32. These I had $3 into from a men's Threader Brusky box. And the crazy thing is this is my second pair of Levi's jeans for men that sold this week. That bundle sold for $28, which is not a lot. But again, I let people know that I was running a sale and that I would be taking these kinds of offers. So so those two items sold for $28. I had $4.66 into those two items. My net profit for both of those items was $17.44. The next thing to sell was this pair of Under Armour purple athletic shorts in a size large for women. Those sold for $12 and I had $2 into them from the reseller who doesn't like to resell clothes. I made a net profit of $7.05. These kind of like compression shorts from brands like Under Armour or Nike have been selling like hotcakes for me. They don't sell for a lot. They typically sell for $15 dollars or less but they are very very quick flips and super easy to photograph so that's why I don't mind listing them. The next bundle had three items. The first item in this bundle was this pair of Joe's denim Bermuda shorts in a youth size 12. Those I think we got from a friend at church for free. Um, my daughter just turned 10 but she has a tiny tiny waist so her waist size is that of like I don't know, like a youth eight or something. So I didn't want to sit around and wait for her to finally be able to fit into these. I didn't even know if they'd still be, you know, in style at that time. So we just went ahead and listed them. The next thing to sell in this bundle was this Shoshana floral ruffle pencil dress in a size 10. And it was made of silk. I got that for $4.25 at a local consignment store. 
And then the last item to sell in this bundle was this pair of Converse Chuck Taylors with like a zebra print. They were high top shoes in a women's size five. Those I have had forever. I did not write down a cost of goods. I don't know if someone gave those to me for free. I don't know what's going on there, but those three items sold for $45. And once you factor in Poshmark's fees and my cost of goods, my net profit on those three items was $31 and 75 cents. So the next bundle was like an eight piece bundle. And this bundle came from someone, I believe on Instagram or it might've been YouTube. I don't remember. And I will put their name right here. Thank you so much. Um, they let me know that they saw that I was running a sale and they went ahead and bundled. I think it was eight pieces, which was amazing. Some of these pieces I had had for a very long time. So it felt really good to move them out. Now, the difficult thing about this bundle is that it was eight pieces. It was mainly stuff in bigger men's sizes. And it was a lot of things like jeans and pants. And so this bundle was heavy. It actually weighed close to 10 pounds, I wanna say. So I had to pay more for shipping, which definitely ate into my profit. Now, I'm gonna share something here that is probably gonna be very controversial. And you do not have to agree with this at all. And if you're like, I would never do that, that's fine, don't ever do it, and that's okay. I was okay doing this because when I made the sale, the buyer reached out to me, let me know that they were a viewer, and so therefore I felt like they weren't going to scam me, but here's what I did. Like I said, this weighed close to 10 pounds, this bundle, and what you have to do if something weighs over five pounds on Poshmark is you have to go into Poshmark and say that you need to like update your shipping label and you have to let them know how many pounds over five pounds your package actually weighs, and then you have to pay through Poshmark for a shipping label that will cover the weight of your heavier package. Poshmark charges a ridiculous amount if you are going over the five pounds. If you sell on Poshmark, you know that shipping on Poshmark is so easy because they just have a flat rate that everyone pays on Poshmark for anything five pounds or under, and that is $7.97. The buyer pays $7.97 additionally on top of whatever it is that they're buying from you in order for you to get that item shipped to them. And as a result, you as the seller can ship in priority mail. You can use flat rate mail packages on USPS. You can use your own poly mailers or your own boxes. It is pretty wonderful, especially for items that you're selling that are close to that five pound weight because, you know, if you had to purchase a shipping label on your own, it could cost you like $15, $20 to ship something that weighs five pounds depending on how far away it's going, how big the item is. So it can be really great. Poshmark shipping does kind of suck a little bit if you are shipping out like a little pair of earrings that don't even weigh a couple ounces and the buyer has to pay $8 to get those shipped out to them. That's a little frustrating. But regardless, Poshmark has figured out a way to really simplify shipping so that it's very easy for sellers to get items to their buyers. That being said, as great as Poshmark shipping is up to five pounds, it starts not being so great when you have to ship something out that is eight pounds or nine pounds because now they want like $22 extra from you to purchase a better shipping label when it shouldn't cost that much if you were just to go through USPS on your own. So this is what I did and this is what, like I'm saying, a lot of you may disagree with and that's fine. You don't ever have to do this if you feel uncomfortable. I'm just telling you what I did on this occasion because one of my goals with this YouTube channel is to be as upfront and honest with you as possible. So what I did was I shipped probably three items from this bundle using the Poshmark shipping label because those three items came out to about five pounds. However, I still had, you know, five other items that weighed around five pounds that I needed to get shipped out. And so what I did was I purchased another shipping label that went to the same address through Pirate Ship. That shipping label, especially because this person lived pretty close to me, that shipping label cost $9.90 versus the 22 extra dollars that Poshmark was gonna charge me to get this package sent to the buyer. Now this is where this is controversial. I know that a lot of you are gonna say in the comments, okay, but if you do that, those five items are not protected through Poshmark, and so if they get lost in the mail, or if anything happens to those items, you are no longer under Poshmark's protection. And that's true. Another situation that could have happened is 
the person could have just decided to scam me. You know, they could have gotten both packages, but they could still say to Poshmark, hey, I only got three out of the eight items. Look, here's the box that the items came in. These were the only three items in the box. I'm missing a good chunk of items from the bundle that I paid for. I need a refund on everything. They open a case and they're obligated to send those three items back, but now they get to hold on to those five items for free. There's a lot of things that could go wrong with doing something like this. And to be honest with you, I'm just not as rich risk averse as I should be. I also just tend to like want to believe the best in people. I know there are some really crappy people out there, but I want to believe in my brain. And I feel like the world has proven to me that the crappy people are the minority and most people are pretty lovely and wonderful and want to be honest and, you know, like want to go to bed at night with a clear conscience. But furthermore, I knew that this was a viewer. I didn't feel like they were going to scam me. And none of these items were things that I paid a ton of money for. Like I was not going to cry myself to sleep if something happened with this transaction and I ended up losing all of my money from all of these items, it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. So for those reasons, that's why I used the Poshmark label for a portion of the bundle, but then purchased a pirate ship label for much less um, to send the rest of it. I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm just being honest with you and telling you what I did. And that is that. You can yell at me in the comments if you want, but I already did it. And the person got the items and they accepted and they left me a nice comment and it, it turned out fine. But again, this is not me telling you, you should do this. This is me just telling you what I did. I also wanted to take a moment to offer a much more risk averse solution that many people probably would have done in this situation. And that is instead of breaking up the package and sending part of it through Poshmark and part of it through pirate ship, I could have reached out to the buyer and let them know, hey, this exceeds the five pound limit for Poshmark packages. Can we please break this bundle up into two bundles and then you will have to pay shipping twice or I could have offered to pay free shipping on the second bundle. And you know, some may argue you would have saved even more that way because then you're only paying $7.97 for that second bundle. Um, the only reason I don't like to go down this route is because I have done that in the past. And in doing so, I've lost the sale. I'm not sure what it is, but I think in that time of canceling the sale, explaining to the buyer what we need to do, you know, I have to create two bundles, you need to purchase both bundles, somehow for some people because it's overly complicated they're just done they don't want to follow through anymore and the sale gets lost and for that reason i don't personally like to go that route especially with people who may be newer to poshmark or have never experienced this before and you may argue okay but this person is a viewer they probably would have worked with you in that way you're absolutely right but again i wanted to just kind of play the game of convenience both for myself and the buyer i didn't want them to have to sit there with me while i cancel the transaction created two bundles i just wanted to make it easier for all of us and i felt safe going the pirate ship route so that's why i did what it did. But there is an alternative where you can stay within Poshmark's protective means and that's not wrong. It's just not what I decided to do this time. So let me tell you the items that were in this bundle. The first item was this new with tags Hagar, which is a brand sold at Walmart, correct? I don't know. But it was this cool 18 performance wear khaki pair of chino shorts in a men's size 40. Um, they were non-iron shorts, which is great. People love that kind of stuff. And I had $3.92 into those from the person who had too much inventory on their hands and just needed to move them. The next item to sell was another Hagar piece, and it was again new with tags, and it was pair of blue chambray non-iron moisture wicking shorts in a size 40W, also $3.92 into those from the same person. The next item to sell was this pair of new with tags signature Levi Strauss gray utility cargo shorts in a men's size 44. Those I got for $4.29 from a local consignment store during some sort of sale that they were running. The next item to sell was this pair of Carhartt heavyweight five pocket cotton light wash denim jeans in a size 44 
four by 30. These I purchased for $4.29 from a local thrift store kind of a while ago. I've had those for a while, I will say. And these by themselves were so heavy. These I think weighed at least two pounds. The next thing to sell was this US Polo Association blue short sleeve polo shirt in a size 4XL tall. This I had $2 into from the reseller who didn't want to resell clothes anymore. The next item to sell was this pair of new with tags, Savane black straight fit dress pants in a size 40 by 32. I had $3 into these from a thread up men's rescue box. Um, and these were also listed for like, I want to say over two years. The next item was this pair of new with tags, champion gray mesh elastic waist athletic shorts in a size 4XL. I had $3.79 into those from where? I think from a thread up box as well from a while ago. And then the last item to sell from this bundle was this Carhartt pair of relaxed fit, heavyweight, flannel lined, 100% cotton jeans in a size 46 by 30. I got those at a local thrift store as well for $4.29. And I have had those in my possession for a very long time as well. So as you can see, I had a lot of items that, you know, I've had for a while. I had a lot of items that were really heavy because they're like heavy duty pants, heavyweight jeans is, you know, even in the listing title because it said heavyweight on the label of the jeans. So there was a lot going on here. When all was said and done, I had $29.50 into those eight items. This bundle sold for $98, again, because of the sale that I was running. I did pay an additional $9.90 to get this shipped out. And so once you factor in all of those things, my net profit on this bundle was $39, which is not a lot for eight items. However, I was just really happy to move these pieces, especially to a viewer, and I was happy to offer them just a really great deal. So thank you for your purchase, and thank you for reinforcing my faith in people by not scamming me and you know accepting the offer, leaving me a love note, all those good things. I appreciate you. So yeah, I moved a lot of pieces in that bundle, made some money. There you go. On eBay, I sold this vintage Land's End striped button down dress shirt in a size men's 16 and a half tall. Um, this sold for $14.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. It was something that I purchased from a reseller, a local reseller who didn't want to resell anymore so that she could focus on her family and just, you know, her personal life. Um, so I had about a dollar and two cents into each of the items that I purchased from her and I made a net profit of $11.92. That was listed for quite some time. It was listed for, I don't know, close to two years at this point, but I'm happy to have finally moved it and made some money off of it. The next thing to sell was this new Wemo, that's the brand name, mini Wi-Fi smart plug. It's good for like Alexa, Google Assistant, and Apple HomeKit. It sold for $11.19. That was because I was running a sale in my eBay store as well, and I made a profit of $9.32 on that. My husband had a number of these, and he was like, do you think you can sell them? And I was like, sure, let's give it a shot. They were still new in the box. It's pretty easy if you have an item that has like a UPC code on it. So for example, I don't know if this would work because this is like Target, but on eBay, if you like press search right here at the bottom, um, there, they give you the option here at the top to type in what it is that you're searching for, or there's like this little, uh, camera icon. And if you click on that, then it'll say right there, point your camera at a barcode. And so if I were to point this at this barcode. Let's see if it'll work. Yeah, I didn't pull anything up and I think that's because it's from Target. Let's try. I just happen to have these like baby wipes down here. Sometimes I use these to help me clean some shoes, but um, let's see if I do this barcode. Yeah, so you can see I just took a picture or I just scanned the barcode and as a result, um, eBay was able to pull up other listings that were of my identical item. Um, so that's what I did on the Wemo, what is this called? mini Wi-Fi smart plug. And that enabled me to find listings that were also selling the same exact thing that I was. I believe I just did sell similar, which means like if you kind of scroll to the bottom of an existing listing towards the bottom, there should be a little button that says sell similar. And if you click that, it basically creates a duplicate of their listing with all of their information. You just have to put in your own pictures, which is kind of great. Saves a lot of time and especially for hard goods and especially for hard goods that are new with tags. That is what I will 
do sometimes because as you know, I'm just not good at listing hard goods. So that was cool to move something that we had no use for in our house and make a little bit of money off of it. I sold something on Facebook Marketplace as well and it wasn't through someone like purchasing the item outright through Facebook Marketplace. It was through someone messaging me through Facebook Marketplace and agreeing to buy it from me. Um, she said she'd pay me through Venmo and that's what she did. So we actually didn't really go through Facebook Marketplace. Therefore, I didn't have to pay any fees to Facebook Marketplace. And she also didn't utilize the goods and services feature on Venmo. Venmo gives you the option to state that something is a good or a service from someone else. And what happens is the person that you are buying from then gets hit with a small fee and then that offers the person who's buying the item a little bit of protection in case you know they never get the item or it doesn't come to them as described. Um, I don't really know how that works. I know I've used that a couple of times too, but um, this person actually just paid me the regular way as if I was a friend of theirs. So this sold for $25. I did pay for shipping. And so after shipping, my net profit on that was $21.01. On Saturday, which was June 10th, on Poshmark, I sold this new with tags, Time and True, which I believe is a Walmart brand, maternity leopard print tie front shirt um, in a size maternity large. That sold for $10. This was also something that came to me from America's Thrift Supply. I probably should have just donated it, but I went ahead and listed it because it was new. I made a net profit of $7.05. On eBay, I sold this Chico's black and white floral pull-on pair of pants in a Chico size two, which is the equivalent of a US size large. That sold for $14.99 because I was running a sale on eBay. It definitely was listed for higher, but that was my full asking price with the sale. That was promoted at 3%, and I had a dollar and 11 cents into it from the local consignment store because that was my average cost of goods when I went back to the birthday sale, you know, a few days after it started. So my net profit on those was $10.50 cents and those sold within a handful of days. The next thing to sell was this Peter Millar pink short sleeve polo shirt for women. Um, it had like UPF 50 plus and it was in a size small. I believe it also had a little um, embroidered like logo on the side for Meyer, which is a local big kind of like a Walmart, but just a different brand. Um, that sold for $12.50. It was also promoted at 3%. And I want to say that was my, maybe someone sent me an offer based off of the you know sale that I was running. I had $3.92 into it from the reseller who had too much inventory. And so I made a net profit of $6.21. That's better than three cents. So I will take it. The next thing to sell on eBay was this Eliza J Paisley and striped blue pink jersey knit sheath dress in a women's size 10. You know, I was running a sale on eBay and I always find that even when you're running an amazing sale, like 50% off or something, people will still send you offers. Like the sale price is not enough. They want it for even lower. And sometimes that's fine because I am willing to go a little bit lower depending on how long I've had the item. So someone sent me an offer of $17 on this dress, even though I had a sale running, but I went ahead and accepted because I've had it for a while. Um, it was promoted at 3%. I had $4.65 into it from a local consignment store. So I made a net profit on that dress of $10.56. Moving on to Sunday, which was June 11th on Poshmark, I sold this torrid olive green tie-dye jersey jumpsuit in a plus size 4X. This I got at Plato's Closet during like a 70% off sale and I was pretty excited about it at first. Um, I picked it up for $5.40. However, once I got it home, I realized that there were a good number of flaws on it. There was like parts of the stitching at the top that was coming undone, but also there were like holes, little like pinholes, but holes nonetheless, on the front, on the back. So I couldn't even list it for very much. I ended up selling it for 13 and I made a net profit of $4.65. It is hard to catch all flaws when you're outsourcing. Um, I feel like I've gotten much better at catching flaws, but you know, I will miss a few every now and then. And this was one of those. On eBay, I sold this pair of Wrangler camouflage cargo denim shorts in a youth boy size 14. These sold for $8 that was promoted at 3%. I told you lots of things on eBay sold this week due to promoted listings. And I had a dollar and 27 cents into that from an Indianapolis Goodwill outlet trip and you know, probably two years ago. So I've had these forever. So when I got the $8 offer, I was like, yep, you can take them because I've had them for too long. And I made a net profit of $4.55. 
The next thing to sell was this lot of two newborn nautical one pieces and shorts for newborns. This lot sold for $7.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. And you know, even though I was running a pretty good sale, if there were items being watched and I was willing to let them go for even less than my sale price, I would go ahead and send those offers. This person accepted. This was promoted as well at 3% and I made a net profit of $4.56. This is something that my my son wore when he was a baby. Um, I've probably had these listed for two to three years. So I was just happy to finally move this lot and move on with my life. The last thing to sell was this pair of Echo Espina low Gore-Tex hiking shoes. They were gray and made of yak leather um, and they were in a women's size 10. Maybe men's, I don't remember off the top of my head, but they were in some sort of size 10. These sold for $34.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I had $8.50 into those from a local Goodwill. I actually have a video coming out soon where I went to Goodwill. I bought five pairs of shoes um, and I show you the the whole process. I show like a haul of the shoes after I source them at the Goodwill. I show how I photograph shoes. I showed how I list and cross listed those shoes. And I'm giving myself a month to show like the sale of the shoes and the shipping of the shoes. So kind of just like a beginning to end when it comes to reselling something. And I just happen to go with shoes for this particular video. So again, if that video sounds interesting to you, make sure that you hit the subscribe button because that video will be uploaded in the next month or so and you don't want to miss it. And while you're out here subscribing to my channel and whatnot, you may as well hit the like button too. It definitely helps out this video and my channel in general in the YouTube algorithm. And I would super duper appreciate that. But this gave me a profit of $22.48, which made me a happy camper because again, we are looking to make profits of $20 or more. That is the goal. That is not always the outcome, but that is what we are striving towards. It's me again. It's the next day. I'm still editing, but I had to come back here and revise my numbers since I forgot that bundle on Poshmark. So here were my numbers for the week for real. On Poshmark, I sold 28 items and that was for a gross sales amount of $399. Um, once you factor in fees and any discount of shipping I may have offered, that total drops to $282. My cost of goods for those 28 items was $78.23. And so my net profit on Poshmark was $203.77. On eBay, I sold 15 items for a gross sales amount of $313.15. Once you factor in eBay's fees and all of the promoted listings that a lot of items sold through, that total drops to $261.35. I had $47.10 as my cost of goods on eBay, and so my net profit for the week was $214.25. I had one Mercari sale for a gross sales amount of $42, and when you factor in Mercari's fees, that total drops to $35.81. My cost of goods for that one item was $15, and so my net profit was $20.81. I had one sale on my website for a gross sales amount of $49.95. That total drops to $41.61 once you factor in Shopify's fees. I had $12 into that item, so I made a net profit of $29.61. On Facebook Marketplace, I sold one item for $25, and once you factor in the amount that I paid for shipping, that total dropped to $21.01. I had no cost of goods into that item, so my net profit was $21.01. So in total, I sold 46 items this week, which was a lot of items compared to weeks past, and that's because I had all these sales running and I was offering amazing bundle you know, offers and whatnot. And so my gross sales for the week was $829.10. When you factor in shipping and fees, that total drops to $641.78. I had $152.33 as my cost of goods for those 46 items and so my net profit for the week was $489.45. It was a higher net profit than I've had in weeks prior. Um, however, the theme of my summer, I feel like still rings true, which is things are selling, they're just not selling for as much. And I really try to do a lot of different things to get more things out the door. And I think they worked. I think running sales on Poshmark and eBay, it definitely helped move stuff out. And it did move out a lot of older pieces, but also with that comes moving some newer pieces. You know, there were things that were only listed for a week or two and they sold for discounted prices. That's kind of the price you pay. I could have gone about it where I was only putting 
older listings on sale, but then I have to sit there and like actually pay attention to what items I'm putting on sale versus just saying everything. Everything is on sale. And that was the route that I decided to take because this week I was busy packing for my trip to Korea and stuff like that. So that is everything that I sold for the week. The last thing I want to show you though is look at my nails. You guys, Korea just does nails so beautifully. They asked me to send them a picture of what it was that I wanted. And basically I sent them a picture of this and then they were able to recreate it like perfectly. Like, what is this? How, how did they do this? So my nails, I was super pleased with. The hair, I don't know. I just, I feel like I look like, um, the Korean word for it is ajima, which means like mature woman. <laughs> and I was going for like, more loose like flowy waves which is like what i do when i curl my hair on my own and now my hair is kind of like fried and i don't know so this is not really what i wanted i also have like bangs but i took them back because i don't know how to style them yet there's a lot going on here so but i'm back i'm back i'm excited about making a ton of content for you not just what sold videos but a lot of hopefully what i think is interesting content but thank you so much for watching i was feeling kind of chatty today because i have not filmed a video in so long so if you made it this far thank you for putting up with me this long i appreciate you so much and i will see you guys in the next one. Bye!